The last time I did a devlog on this project was back in November of last year. The basic idea of that video was to demonstrate a prototype app I built with Angular that would allow you to write some code and then have it replay as if you were typing it. So I talked about some of my thoughts around building a minimum viable product and the technical aspects of how the product actually worked. But perhaps the most surprising thing about this devlog series is that there is actually a part two. Admittedly, many projects of mine in the past haven't made it past the initial concept stage. But there was enough interest in the idea and I liked the product enough myself that I decided to actually take this from a hacky and rough prototype to a more legitimate product. So a key point I made in the last video is that for any code I intend to keep and maintain, I will build it from scratch using test-driven development and other important architectural principles from the beginning, as to not be building on a foundation of buggy and messy code. So I took the prototype app and, as promised, threw it in the bin and redeveloped the app properly from scratch. So now I have this nicely organized application structure. Uh, I have suites of end-to-end -end and unit tests. Uh, everything's split up into these organized uh, NX libraries. We've even thrown some NGRX uh, component store into the mix. And now everything is absolutely perfect and there is definitely no tech debt or weird hacks already festering away in the code base. So why bother with all of this? Uh, perhaps some of you are thinking, just ship man, you're over engineering, bro. Uh, Levels has built multi-million dollar businesses with scrappy PHP and he doesn't even write commit messages. So I'm going to talk about why I did things this way and how the code is structured in this video. But first let's cover the actual changes in the product. So the key difference now is that rather than having a single editor and manually specifying which lines you want to replay, now you can create multiple different editors in these slides or tabs. So in each new tab, you add the code that you want to replay. And then when you hit this play button, it's going to replay the changes between each of the slides. So it starts off on the code from the first slide, then it types in the code for the second slide, and then the new code for the third slide and so on. So you can add as many of these slides as you like. Right now it just plays through all of the slides at once, but I'll likely add a feature to uh, pause between each slide in the next batch of changes. Okay, so now let's take a look at some of this over-engineered code that we're dealing with here. So I don't want to make this a video about how NX works, but the key idea is that I have an app here called RMC, short for replay my code that I've generated. So this is the new good app that I generated. And you can see we also have a separate app here that holds the end-to-end -end test for that application. And the old initial prototype app also lives in this mono repo as well, which made it easy to reference as I was building out the proper RMC app. So the prototype app has all of the code inside of the app itself. As I've mentioned before, it's just one big messy code base. The difference with the RMC app here is that this is just a lightweight shell. It basically just bootstraps the Angular application and that's about it. All of the code for this app is split up into these NX libraries under this RMC folder here. So you can see I've broken this up into three separate features and the dashboard, which is the main page of the application, editor slides, which contains the code for the main editor and replay feature. So I have some NGRX component store stuff going on in this data access folder. Uh, the main feature itself lives in the feature folder. And I have an additional folder here for the dumb UI components like the uh, slides tab bar that we use to click between the different slides. And we also have a shell feature here, which just contains the basic uh, layout for the application. So if we just jump into that RMC app that I said is just a basic sort of shell for the application, if we take a look at this main.ts file, we'll see that it basically, when it's bootstrapping the application, it's just loading in that shell from that library. And basically that's the whole responsibility of this lightweight shell here. It's loading in the shell feature and then the shell feature is going to handle loading in everything else. So we don't have enough time to go through everything, but let's focus in a bit on the main part of all of this, which is the code to replay the code. So we'll find that inside of the data access folder here, which contains the NGRX component store. And as we can see immediately, this is absolutely perfect code with nothing to be improved. So a lot of this is just boring uh, state management stuff like adding uh, a new tab, removing a tab and so on. The key part here is this play tabs effect, which contains this RxJS stream, which handles replaying out code changes as if they are being typed. So again, we won't dive too deeply into this, but I will give you the basic outline here. 
So when this effect is called, we will switch to the tab selector stream to get an array containing information about all of the tabs or slides, specifically the ID for each slide and the code contained on that slide. We set the active tab back to the code of the very first tab. And I also give it this special ID of playing so that we know that we're currently in a state of actually playing back this code, not the normal editing state. So I then call this get changes for tabs method that will take in the tabs and return an array of lines to be added such that if we start with the code on the first tab, we now know every line of code we need to type and where to progress through each slide of code until we get to the end. So this code took longer than I was expecting to figure out, but the approach I'm using now seems pretty stable. The only downside is that I haven't figured out how to handle deleting code yet. Uh, for each new slide of code you add, you can only add code to it, not delete existing code. So if you do delete existing code, the replay mechanism has no idea how to handle it and it will freak out and cause a mess. So my brain was a little bit too tired to focus on this problem for now. So if you have any ideas on how to solve this problem of taking uh, an array of lines of code from one slide and another one, and then figuring out which ones need to be deleted, feel free to leave a comment. So once we have our changes, we then switch to a stream of those changes so that we can deal with one individual change at a time or one individual line at a time. We then type that line by calling this type change method. And that is going to take that line and turn it into a stream of individual characters in that line. And it's going to add a delay to give that effect that the words are actually being typed and do all sorts of fun stuff to make sure that it gets typed in the right place in the editor. Now, if you're wondering, because I always go on about declarative and reactive code, uh, this code right here is very much imperative code. It doesn't matter that this is inside of a stream. The giveaway here is that I'm using a tap to do all of this work. So we type the change and once one line completes, the next line can come in. The concat map is what causes this stream to wait for each line to finish being typed before it begins the next one. And this is all just going to keep repeating until every line that needs to be added has been added to the editor. So that's the guts of all of this. So now back to the question of Mate, isn't this all just a bit over-engineered for your little toy app? And to that, I would say no. The answer to that question would be yes, if you didn't already know TDD and NX and NGRX and reactive and declarative coding and all of that. None of what I did here is required to get the product out. You certainly don't need to be breaking it up into NX libraries. But I use this sort of stuff all the time and I like using this stuff. It's how I like thinking about projects. It's how I like organizing projects. So the time investment isn't all that much more than if I had just gone with a sort of more hacky, move fast and break things approach. Certainly the approach I have taken here will speed up development in the long run. Probably the biggest project killer for me, and I suspect for a lot of people, is that the code base just becomes a nightmare to work on. So as you're doubting the viability of what you're building, the code has become such a mess that you hate working on it and would like nothing more than to justify to yourself why you should actually just move on to this other cool new project instead. You can just throw all of your tech debt in the bin and pretend it never happened. So my idea is that I will take a little extra time to set up my projects in a way that will reduce tech debt, improve architecture, and make working on the code base a nice experience rather than a painful one. So now if this project does well, I have a solid base to work from and will be able to move quickly and ship quality code in the future rather than wrestling in the mud with tech debt and having just a pile of UX issues that go unaddressed. And if it doesn't do well, then the only real downside is that I've spent a little extra time honing my skills on a real world application with maybe a nice GitHub repo to show off at the end of it all. All right, that's it for this one. If you have any feedback about the project, I would love to hear about it. Uh, as always, if you found this video interesting or useful at all, please consider dropping a like or subscribe before you go. And I hope to see you back here for devlog number three, where I chuckle this code in the bin and pivot into building Tinder for dogs.